Bonjour class. So I was um, looking at your placement of adjectives worksheet and I thought that we could um, have a little chat on um, things that we need to look out for. Um, so I might have to split this into two videos because my YouTube won't let me uh, post videos that are too long. So um, here I'm going to do a little bit of instruction. Okay, so um, exercise A um, is about your bangs adjectives or about placement. So you have to think about whether they go before or if they go after. Um, but section B is all about irregular adjectives. And it gives you a big old list of those on page 126. It's that very first page. Um, so I'll show you that real quick. Right, so here's page 126. Um, all of these are things that you're going to see in the um, exercise B. Okay, um, this second page right here talks about the position um, and I'll talk about that here in one sec, but then whenever you do the activities they are kind of flip flopped um, because A talks about um, agreement and position while B you just have to worry about agreement. So, um, well, first off, let's, let's talk about the regulars just to review that. Okay, um, you've got to make it agree to gender and number. Okay, gender is going to be whether it's masculine or feminine. The most common way to make an adjective feminine is to add E. Okay, so for example, for becomes fort. Okay, other ones that you have are IF. You buy the E, so like actif, active. Um, another one would be EUX to EUSE. Okay. Um, if you already have an E, you don't add another E, you just leave it the same. Um, if it ends in ER for pronunciation, it adds an accent mark going down. Um, and then here in a minute, we'll look at all of those um, irregular ones. So I've got three types for you, type one, two, and three. Okay, um, with number, remember that just means is it singular or plural, okay? And you won't really use, you won't use really any of these, I don't think, on that activity. It's just a little review. But the plural, the singular plural, you do need to know, right? If it's singular, we are not going to add anything to the end, okay? It's just going to either be masculine or feminine. But if it's plural, more than likely, we're just going to add an S, okay? The only time you don't is with adjectives ending in S already or X. So now let's talk about our irregulars, irregulars, okay? So it shows you these, like I said, right here, okay? So this is what we're gonna talk about first is this big old set right here, okay? These are adjectives that double the consonant before the feminine E, okay? So for example, if you have the word gro, which means fat, that is masculine. To make it feminine, we double the S and add an E. Okay, that is for pronunciation reasons. All right, let me grab my list so I can see what else. All right, um, ba, which means basic or low, I guess, um, would be ba's with an extra s. Bolt, which means good, turns into bun. Okay, because it doesn't work um, if you don't have that double n, you can't pronounce it correctly in French. Um, I'll do one or two more. So if we have cruel, it becomes cruel. Um, let's see here. Um, gentil would become gentil. Okay, see we double the L and add an E. Same thing here, we doubled the L and we added an E. Okay, um, these are on page 126, so you can always look there. Um, for more, if you're not sure which category your adjectives on that act on that worksheet um, apply to, um, same thing for these super irregulars. They're also on page 126. And for the most part, what happens is before you add the e, 
um, it just normally adds an extra letter. Um, and sometimes you have to be a little careful as to which letter it adds. Um, so for example, when you have blanc, it turns into blanche. Um, when you have do, it turns into deuce. Fo turns into fos. Um, favori adds a lot, but it makes more sense for his for us. Oops, favorite. Okay, with these, you're gonna have to look at that page, page 26. There's really no um, trick to learning them. You just kind of have to memorize them. Um, so, like I said, on page 126, what I would do with those adjectives, whenever you're making them agree, is just check back and see if they're on those two lists. You have an entire list that basically has the answers for you, okay? Um, the last thing I want to show you guys with these irregulars um, are the special bangs, okay? So remember the bangs adjectives? They go before the noun. Okay, and that stands for beauty, age, number, goodness, and then size. Okay, so if I were to give you some examples, beauty uh, would be like beau, joli, led. Okay, so beautiful, pretty, ugly. Age would be vieux, jeune, and also age. Number. Um, it gives you some more numbers in there. Um, I think like one of them is two, um, which means all, but also just like un, deux, trois, and so on and so forth. Remember that goodness only means good or bad. It doesn't mean, you know, sometimes we think, you know, being intelligent is a good quality, but you want to think about whether that quality means that that person is basically good or evil, right? Because you can be smart and be a terrible person. Um, so it's just our, our inner goodness, I guess. And then we have size. So size, for example, be grand, um, petit, court. Um, what else? Well, we'll just leave it at that, okay? All right, um, oh, also one more for age. Um, because we'll see it here in a second, is nouveau. Um, that means new. So if you think about like an object, okay, its age could be that it's new. It's new on the earth. It's new to your possession. Um, whatever its age in that case is new. I think that's a, um, a weird one, but it, it's another way of thinking of young. Okay, now there is something special with these, okay? With beau, you yeah. And nouveau, they change with masculine singular nouns beginning with a vowel. And that is so much to think about, but what they will change to is belle, vieille, and nouveau. Okay, so for example, I would say un bel homme, a beautiful man because the reason why they do this is purely for pronunciation reasons. So I can't really say unboam. <laughs> we need something to separate those two vowel sounds. So we have unbellum. Um, same thing, we could say unyayum. We can't really say unvieyum. <laughs> it's just a lot easier if you have that L to kind of separate the two. And remember, so you're probably looking at this and thinking, she's crazy. An H is a consonant, but in French, H is considered a vowel because it's silent. Okay, um, so let me try one more <laughs> um, where it doesn't start with an H. So for example, if I had a nouvelle arbre, a new tree, or un vieil arbre, or un bel arbre, okay, all of those, um, all of those work. Okay, but, right, notice, so those begin with a vowel, but if I have un beau um, garçon, I don't change it to bel, we don't, make, we don't say un bel garçon, it is only if this word right here starts with a vowel and it is masculine and singular.
Okay, so those are the um, things that we need to look out for in our um, worksheet. <laughs> so um, I'm going to post a second video where I give you specific steps to go through um, with the um, activities that you guys have. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps you tackle the next assignment or that assignment. Thanks.